think we've got a lot to talk about after watching that. Uh, it's a depiction of a, of a really gruesome moment, some larger than life characters, and I, don't, I can't be the only one in the room who saw some really harrowing, kind of resonant things with what's happening in the country and what's in the news today. You know, I've just been hearing about the assassination my whole life, and really, through osmosis, I think I came into this project originally believing that Ray was innocent, just because I'd heard really? the conspiracies enough times. He was a patsy, he was framed. Um, I, it, it must be true, right? I, I just sort of, you hear enough, the same thing repeated enough times and you begin to believe it. It's interesting that you're talking about uh, you know, the, the struggle with Ray as a, as a character because one of the hardest things for us to do making the film was to concentrate and focus on him. Uh, so that he was compelling and we hope sort of mesmerizing, but not enough so that you were rooting for the guy right. or that you were somehow sympathetic for him. And it was like a house of cards. Every time you spend a little bit too much time in one scene on Ray or a little bit too much time on King, everything sort of started to fall apart, especially if it was at the beginning of the film where you were trying to set up this tension between these two paths that we're going to sort of meet in this sort of fatefully yeah. entwined way. And I know that one of the <laughs> main reasons why the conspiracy theories continue to exist is that members of King's own family have said that they don't think Ray was responsible. We didn't really um, feel that the conspiracy story was something we could grapple with in the film. I mean, it, we spent 90 minutes basically articulating all the ways in which we felt James O. Ray did this. Um, and at the 85th minute to suddenly say, oh, well, by the way, there's a whole other story, which would take another 90 minutes just to get to the bottom of, right. uh, was something that narratively we couldn't do. And, and I find those kind of stories utterly sort of circular and, and open-ended and about as interesting as, as a long conversation about UFOs. And, and I think it's, it's a measure of his cunning, because I think the, the thing about Ray, people think, well, Ray was stupid. Well, this is a guy that, you know, he escaped from two maximum security prisons. What's not in the film is that a, a few years later he escaped again from uh, a Tennessee prison uh, and was is uh, on the lam for about three days until he's caught by bloodhounds. Um, but he escaped from two maximum security prisons, and you know he had this cunning. Uh, he had this sort of um, well, his his own attorney said he was smart like a rat. And um, he, I think it's kind of a measure, final measure of his cunning that he was able to convince certain members of the inner circle and the King family that not only was he innocent, uh, but that he was, you know, this patsy that had been framed as part of this massive shadowy conspiracy that involved literally hundreds if not thousands of people who, you know, have not said it or breathed a word for 42 years. Uh, how much of what we're hearing in the news today is reminding you of what was going on in, this, in 1967, 1968? Well, you know, obviously I wish it wasn't as topical a film as it is. Um, uh, and I think we, our original conception was to try and use these two lives and their kind of fateful collision as a lens to look at the America in that, that year. America sort of coming apart at the seams. And I mean, it's just spooky and weird right now. To, I mean, I, I shot those interviews. Benjamin Hooks has recently passed away and uh, Andy Young. I mean, I shot those interviews six weeks before the uh, presidential election. Mm -hmm. And you could just see in their eyes the sort of intense pride and excitement that they felt about Obama. History doesn't repeat itself. I mean, I, I guess it was Twain who said it, it, it doesn't repeat itself, but sometimes it rhymes. And, you know, there are eerie rhymes. There are easy, eerie, you know, all the chatter and the internet kind of echo chamber that's going on and, and all these people getting riled up. Left-wingers and right-wingers, really. Everybody's shouting at everybody and, and there's no civil dialogue going on and these are really scary times. So I hope we'll just sort of take a deep breath as a nation and kind of figure this thing out. Uh, because we do not want a repeat of the spring of 1968.